Hello and welcome back to Los Comics TV. I'm your host, Javier Hernandez. And today, the devil man is in the details. So today I'm going to do another uh, drawing demo. Uh, today I'm going to draw a character, Japanese, famous Japanese uh, comic and anime and merchandising uh, phenomena called Devil Man. This was created by Go Nagai back in 1972. Um, Go Nagai is also the creator of another property you, you may have heard of, uh, Mazinger Z, the giant robot. Um, the first giant robot to be piloted by an actual human, you know, inside the robot. So there's been a lot of giant robots in Japan and it's like a whole uh, genre, but that's a very specific thing where the robot was piloted by a human, but that's a whole nother thread and maybe we'll do a show on that. Um, you know, it's funny, sometimes you learn about comics or manga, whatever, from the actual comic. Or in a lot of cases, nowadays people learn from uh, superheroes, I think, at least in America, from the movies. Um, I learned about Devil Man at a toy store. It was probably, well, it was the late 90s. I may have already started doing my comic. First issue of El Muerto was in 98. Um, but either late 90s or right at the tip of 99, 2000, but I was in this toy store, a local toy store, um, and they, it's a real cool toy store. I don't know if they're still around in the Montebello Mall, Extreme Toys, they were called. Um, they don't, they carry some of the regular mainstream toys that you'd find at Toys R Us, whatever, but they would have tons of toys from, like, collectible toys you wouldn't see anywhere else. So they had this whole line of Japanese toys, and they had these hanging up on the wall. Um, this is the actual first figure I bought. So this character was in the package. Um, I took it out since. Uh, so that's Devil Man in his the way he's shown in the cartoon version, the anime series. Um, and this is his alter ego, Akira Fudo. What caught me off, you know, not off guard, but what caught my attention was like, you know, who's this character? He's not a superhero, right? He's wearing a jeans and a yellow T-shirt with the red letter A on there, and then he's holding a belt, which I thought was just like, what is that about? And then as I took the package down, I'd see, okay, it's in Japanese. So, yeah, it looks like, I mean, they even kind of look Japanese um, manga style when you just look at it without, there's no Japanese on the front, I don't think. So, but then, you know, okay, it's like it's some type of series of, uh, you know, comic or cartoon or something. So, eventually I found out more about it. Um, I, th we used to have these store. well, in, in Japan, there's this chain of stores called Mandarake. Um, they're known for, sometimes like they have like five-story buildings or taller, filled with nothing but, you know, manga of all type, uh, merchandise, toys, posters, prints, you know, DVDs, back when that was a big thing. I'm sure still, they still have a lot of DVDs there, though. Um, so anyway, we were lucky enough here in the LA area, we had one in what's called the South Bay area down along the coast um big japanese american community there so that's probably why they had that mandaraka store there they had a lot of imported uh it was a one-story store um it wasn't a, a huge one but we didn't have one out here so that was a big deal but it was a pretty good sized store i guess but it was packed wall to wall with all kinds of japanese import manga and such um so one day i was l lucky enough to you know walk by the front counter and i noticed they had this five volume devil man hardcover series and i've been looking for them for a while since i you know discovered devil man through the toy line um so it's like okay and it wasn't that much actually i think it was like 60 65 bucks which considering their imports and um they're originally published uh, these are this set is from 1987 but the manga came out in 1972 published in uh, shonen weekly magazine in installments you know for whatever months and months but it's basically a, what's the story's about. It's about this um, young high school kid, Akira Fudo. He gets basically possessed by this demon, Amon. Um, Amon possesses him, so they can, you know, so Amon can lead like the demon charge against the world. But it's kind of funny by him possessing Akira, who was like, you know, an innocent, kind-hearted, pure soul. Um, it's not that the demon was, it was almost like the demon was possessed by Akira in a way. It's just that the demon started seeing things through Akira's eyes. And of course, he, you know, when he saw, um, Akira's girlfriend, Miki, 
Miki Maki Muda, let's see, he kind of like fell in love with her, right? Like, oh my gosh, she's so sweet and cute. And so it's kind of interesting how the demon, um, there she is, there's Miki. There's Miki and Akira in the high school. But once, uh, he's, not, he's not possessed yet. So his friend Ryo Asuka tries to convince Akira, hey, you, you know, the demons are going to attack. And my theory is if a demon possesses you, you may be able to control it, which actually is kind of what happened. Um, so anyway, that's that's the, you know, just a quick snapshot of the series. I will definitely be doing, you know, a go, you know more episodes specifically on going to guy and his work and I'd maybe do a, we'll do like a nice little uh, Devil Man Bible study. <laughs> Check out more of the Devil Man work and some of the other work. It's been a big influence on me since I discovered it. Um, a lot of his techniques and just the way he views, um, the way Go Get the Guy views storytelling and, and such has really been a big influence. But these are a couple of magazines that came out uh, just two years ago, I think. Um, this one came out first, I think, and then a year later, for the 50th anniversary of Go the Guy's career, they repackaged it, you know? But I gotta tell you, the Japanese. As long as I've known um, buying Japanese magazines and such since the uh, 80s, they are such they have such a high level of design. Um, so anyway, but I don't want to spend too much time on these because I want to get to the drawing. But just is you know samples of going to guys' work. Um, you can see it bigger in the magazine as opposed to showing you the comics. But um, yeah, it's fantastic work. You know, it's yes, it's very dark because it's Devil Man, it's demons. But at the same time, because of the characters, Akira and Miki and such, there's a lot of sweetness in the story. There's a humor. Um, you know, kind of has some soap opera element. And in some ways, it reminds me of Spider-Man, right? Where you got these young characters going about their you know regular lives, and then there's all these uh, superheroics, or in this case, demonology and horror and such. So... Um, Oh, check this out. I gotta share this really quick. This is um, so this is inside this magazine. They reprint, you know, some of the pages of the of the final of the final of the comic, the climax. And this is this is printed from the original art, and you know you can you can see the old yellow paper now, right? This this page is like forty years old, so it's kind of like they do in the American comics. Is uh, when they reprint the original artwork, you know, as as close as possible but um i just love this double page spread this huge gigantic dragon with uh that character is called satan there's devil man and it's the great climatic battle but i mean hopefully some of the detail you can you could see in there but it's just like just the idea like so many great works of art just the idea that these two pages i don't know how big they are you know but they exist somewhere i assume in a vault in japan somewhere that that these pages exist and that somebody created this is created all by hand right it's ink it's brush it's pan nibs it's white paint it's even got some uh zipper tone here looks like on the gray um and then you know the uh just like american the old american comics the dialogue here is paste you know printed out and pasted into this uh word balloon that they have so um boy talk about coveting something right it'd be nice to have those but I don't have $5 million or whatever, even if they would sell it. So anyway, um, I'm going to start drawing this uh, Devil Man. But just showing you more of the artwork and more of the stuff that just got me really excited about the uh, series and the character and, and the artist. Oh, and there's the uh, sequence there again. But, you know, if you haven't heard of Devil Man, there he goes. There's, a, there's our guy, Gona Guy. About, I think now he's 74 years old. Still active, still running his company, Dynamic Productions. Um, so that's, there we go. Let's see, let me get this over here. Um, let me share this really quick. And, and I'll do a full episode on Manga Muertos, like a manga version of my character, or a, kind of like a, a nod to manga, but definitely influenced by Devil Man. I mean, there's Diego wearing the, um, right? You can't, you can't go wrong with the yellow t-shirt with the red trim and then uh, put your uh, first name of your, put the first letter of your name there in uh, <laughs> on the pocket. So like I said, I'll do a deeper episode on Manga Mart though, but we got to start drawing here. Um, 
let's see here. Okay, so what I here's here's what I'm gonna draw on. Another one of my 11 by 14 white bristle papers. I'll put it sideways so you can see the whole thing. And then now it's gonna get cropped off, but. And so what I did beforehand, before I drew it on here, I drew it, hopefully you can see that. It's hard to see why it's blue on green paper. I did a quick sketch, you know, what am I gonna draw? I just wanna have it kind of drawn out. So for purpose of time, I already, you know, penciled it with my uh, non-photo blue pencil here. And now I'm just gonna start inking it. And I should be able to finish it because today I'm only going to use black. Uh, you you probably seen, if you haven't, check out my two previous drawing demos. I did a um, Cosmic El Muerto drawing, which I did it in black and gray tones. And then I did a Spawn, believe it or not, in full color. But I'm just going to use, for the purpose of this demo and also because the original Devil Mountain manga is, was just black and white, I'm just going to use black. So I'm going to use my Pentel Pocket Brush Pan. I got a box of nice sharp Sharpies. Uh, here's the big giant chisel point. I got a, another brush here, another Japanese brush, a Micron, and my trusty Presto Jumbo Correction Pens for the white. So just gonna be, we're just gonna hit this with black and use different type of pens and um, see what it comes out, you know, see what it looks like. So, let me start here. So like I said, I already laid it out. Sometimes I go over it with a, a pencil, like a regular graphite pencil and sharpen it. But I want to keep it loose now. I want, to, I want this to be very, well, it's not 100% spontaneous because I already, you know, laid it out here. But I wanted to have a certain spontaneous factor to it. So um, I'm just going to basically start, <laughs> I'm going to start tracing my own artwork um, with the black. So... I've been, like I said, now I've been familiar with Devil Man, you know, gee, probably a good 20 years. Um, definitely, I've drawn him quite a bit of times. I mean, I love the design on it, right? I mean, it's like this demon monster superhero. What's not to like about that, if you like that type of genre of stories? Um, it's got this cool Batman type. Uh, I guess he's headgear, but it's not a costume, right? It's his actual body and skin and leathery wings and such. So it's not a costume he puts on. He transforms into this creature. Creature of the night, if Batman doesn't mind me uh, stealing his tagline there. I, and I do like these Batman-type bat wing uh, head wings he's got on here. So, so yeah, Devil Man. Um, it's a very interesting character. Like I said, for the variety of reasons, where like a lot of manga, it, you know, just visually, it kind of has like that cute art about it. If you want to call it that. Um, a lot of that's kind of like influenced from the uh, what they call the God of Manga. Tezuka, right? Osamu Tezuka, creator of Astro Boy. Um, he was a huge fan of Walt Disney comics and animation. So when he started doing manga in the 50s, he incorporated a lot of that cute, you know, cute character design that you'd see in those Disney uh, cartoons and, and comics. So Tezuka was so influential when, you know, other Japanese cartoonists started making their own manga. A lot of them incorporated that. So, you know, we definitely saw that in some of these uh, going to guy, some of the going to guy art I showed you, right? Let me, see. actual comic art. But yeah, it's amazing how one, one artist, you know, kind of started that whole manga movement. Um, influenced like so many others you know over the decades well when you got to find something you never find it right but uh, okay so let me get back to this um, and you know some of you may have seen the there's a Netflix there's a, uh, there was a new Netflix Devil Man animated series Devil Man Crybaby 
which I think came out in 2018, which is yeah, definitely still on Netflix. Um, you know, made in Japan, but I guess it was exclusively exclusively made to be shown on Netflix. So check that out. It's um, it's a retelling of the original um, Devil Man story, but you know, it's got a got some modern uh, sensibilities to it, and it's got some you know newly created characters and it's the same basic story but there's some little plot points and developments that are that are new and they're really interesting I, I really like the series um I was kind of surprised when I saw it it's like well it's Netflix so it's not like they have to worry about making it rated PG or even a soft R it's like oh no it's pretty out there which is cool right like definitely fits in mode with um, a lot of Gona Guy sensibilities if you look at a lot of the mangas he's done. So I always think it'd be nice to place music while I'm doing these, especially a lot of the Devil Man uh, soundtrack stuff, but then you get into copyright issues and then I don't want to get this pulled from uh, YouTube or they cut the audio out and then you not only not hear the music but you don't hear me talking. Which, to some people, that may not be a bad thing, but um, part of these demos, for me, the fun of it is not just sharing the, my art I'm doing, but, give you know, talk about the topic at hand or other topics at hand. Like I said, I didn't want to ever just plop the camera, you know, on my face for, the, for half an hour as I talk to you guys. So if I'm always uh, showing some comics or artwork or in this case drawing I think it's a good way to pass the time and get the content across so yeah drawing devil man's hairy uh, it's like their pants right but it's like we call that a uh, creature from um, mythology was it pan the goat look you know those goat creatures from the forest but they get the it's like the rain Harry pants. Um, okay, so let's see here. Let's get his wing channel, smear the ink. You know, a lot of times, for years now, artists have been doing, um, what do you call it, live stream, right? When they're drawing, and then they have a little... Uh, they have a little chat room right on the side of the screen where, you know, viewers, fans can uh, be in the uh, little chat room just typing in questions, comments. And and I've been, I've been in a chat room as a fan before as somebody was doing a podcast or talking and having a discussion. And what happens sometimes is, um, you know, you start chatting with other fans on there, which is fine. But then, you know, sometimes you start riffing off on other, you, you know, someone makes a little joke. Not about the person talking, but like a little side thing, a little joke. And then like these little conversations start developing, which um, I guess that's just part of the, that's just, you know, customary, right? I mean, so some of the little conversations going on in the chat room have nothing to do with what you're seeing on screen or hearing. But, but also when the artist is drawing is you know the artist is drawing and then there's all these questions coming out here and comments and yeah sometimes they address them sometimes they don't see them sometimes they're caught up in the work which i totally understand that so i was always you know i haven't done a live stream as you know as i'm drawing because i always i always feel that i won't be um you know maybe missing a lot of the questions that they're asking which make me feel bad it's like well if they're asking the questions I should be addressing it. But then again, if I'm just looking at their questions, I am not getting any drawing done. So, um, <laughs> yeah, but, you know, like I said, people do it all the time. And I guess that's just the uh, culture of it, the etiquette of it. But, like I said, I, I, I would, I guess, be distracted reading the uh, commentary just out of, you know, out of interest and just politeness. But so that's why I guess, you know, I, I'm doing these... Uh, I'll do these drawing demos with my own commentary, just sitting here 
talking to myself, basically. Which wouldn't be the first time, right? But like I said, uh, I don't want to have any music because I don't want this video to be edited or pulled or whatever by the powers that be. I guess I should write going to the guy, hey, can I play Devil Man music and put on a little note so I could show the YouTube, uh, <laughs> I could show the YouTube sensors later. Okay, so. All right, so on the sketch I had, I had a circle of fire here. So I'm gonna include that here. Fire's not something uh, anyone should be surprised to see in a Devil Man uh, scenario. I don't know if you can hear it, but you can hear the I hear the pitter patter of rain outside right now. Um, but you may not be you may not be able to hear it. All right, so. This has gone pretty quick, and like I said, I'm only going to use black, and maybe some of the white, the white cor uh, correction pen. But might, this might get done a little quicker than um, I thought, so which is fine. We'll just we can stop the video at that point. Because once I'm done with this, I don't want to just diddle that all around unless I can think of something really interesting, or maybe show you some more of the books, the mangas. In the meantime, let me just work on this. And um, so, yeah, in the um, in '98, I had started doing my comic, and like I said, I was already getting really uh, hip to Devil Man and, and such, and a lot of other manga at the time too. And um, in the early days of uh, self publishing, I used to do a lot of the San Francisco area shows. In fact, I debuted El Muerto in San Jose at um, the Alternative Press Expo, I, I mentioned the ape. So we would drive up there, it used to be in uh, February, I think. We'd drive up there and um, me and my friend Rafael Navarro, we used to stop at a shop up there called uh, Kimono My House. Clever little name. And it was this, you know, tall building about, I don't know, eight stories in, a, in the kimono in my house it was a it was a shop where they had mostly Japanese toys and then some manga and posters and prints but they were definitely well known for being an importer of Japanese uh, collectible toys so we'd always make it a point to uh, go there and it was a neat building because uh, you walk in the building and you take the elevator and it was on the it was literally on the top outside like the elevator to the very top and you're on the roof and then you walk across the roof and then the little building was there, the, sh the shop. So you walk into like, I think there was plants and such outside, which was really interesting. It was a really neat setup they had. And um, I haven't been there in years. But yeah, we'd go there, you know, every year, at least in those early years of going to the Ape, always made a, plan a point to stop at a kimono my house. And of course, you know, definitely bought a lot of, toys there and uh definitely got i know i got a lot of devil man toys and uh different other characters gigantor and such uh giant robot talk about all those at a later date those are all part of uh either my growing up or part of my uh, education in, in comics in this case you know foreign comics manga my first exposure as a kid to um Japanese, you know, characters would, besides Godzilla, the Godzilla films would definitely be Speed Racer. Speed Racer was a really big, uh, she was in reruns here for us in the early 70s. That was a big favorite of mine. Um, definitely going to talk about that at one point, you know, its own show on that one. Definitely a lot to talk about Speed Racer for me, so... Okay, now we got to color uh, Batman. 
We gotta call her Devil Man's Wings. All right. You know, I've, I've been asked before on panels, you know, when I'm doing a comic book convention. And then I get asked, like, hey, what's your dream project? And then, you know, one of my little cute little answers, like, well, I'm doing it right now. I'll tell Muerto. And then, uh, but I go, well, really, I do have one. I have a, I have, I would, I would say I have two. Two of uh, what, you know, what's called dream project. And one of them, I told people, well, one of them is going to get done eventually. It's going to be a, um, I want to do a graphic novel on the um, conquest of Mexico. Which, um, there's some artists doing one right now, actually, online. And, oh my gosh, for the life of me, I I don't think, I forgot what it's called. I, I, you know what I mean? Like, I think it's called, I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it's called The Conquest of Mexico. It might very well be, but I thought it had a different name. Um, yeah, I don't know what it is. Every time I do these shows... When I'm thinking of something that I want to share with you guys, all of a sudden, like, I get a blank. It's like, I don't know. Can't be stage fright, right? Because I'm not on a, you know, I don't see you guys out there. So that's what usually gives people stage fright. They see the people. I don't know. It's just with a brain fart. So so I want to do one, you know, um, but I want to do one a little different. It's uh, It's... It's probably going to be more in the vein of, like, uh, Frank Miller's Sin City. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Frank Miller's 300. That famous uh, battle of the, Sp the Spartans and the Persians, which pissed a lot of people off, the, his actual comic, for different reasons, but, you know, he wasn't doing... He wasn't setting out, you know, from what I could tell, but just reading the, the comic, he wasn't trying to, like, his, the historical accurate scientific accurate uh portrayal of that battle so that's kind of more what i have in line with uh, my story of the conquest of mexico you know want to make it very operatic you know very epic you know do the research on it but then not be married to the uh Hitting every historical fact, or, you know, I don't know how to put it, but... So, anyway, that... I'll, I'll, I put that as, like, a dream project, but I say, it's like, well, it's not like it's out of my realm to do it. It's just a matter of I want to wait a couple of years, um, just get a lot more time under my belt. You know, I want to be seasoned when I work on that with just more... Well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of history I have to read up on. But also just want, you know, increase my vocabulary as far as uh, my tools... My abilities as a, as an artist, as a cartoonist. So, so that one, I'm, I'm gonna let that kind of percolate for a couple of years. But the other, the real dream project, because this is a dream, is like, well, it may not. That's most likely not gonna happen because it's other variables involved. I would love to do a Devil Man story, like an official one, right? Um, you know, with under the auspices of Gona Guy and you, published in Japan or published here, but still, it's like an official. Uh, you know, adaptation or version of Devil Man. Even if just a, it's just like a one-off. It wouldn't be. It's not meant to like change everything you know about Devil Man, but just kind of. But like I said, that's that's more in the dream project category because dream projects I think are, I think when people ask like, well, what's something that you may not really be able to do because of circumstances or whatever. So, that one. Uh, let's put Devil Man at my top of my. My dream wish my wish list but like i said you never know you never know um you know one thing they do in japan a lot there's this whole convention maybe one or two they're huge they're fan they're fan conventions where the fans do like a fan will do a devil man comic they can print a limited run you know not thousands maybe less than a hundred and then they get a table and there's probably like I don't know, 10, 20,000 other people in that convention hall. Um, I think that show alone dwarfs San Diego Comic-Con. If you know about San Diego Comic-Con, that's like, wow, that's crazy. So, you know, maybe one day I'll do that. I'll, do, I'll, I'll try to get me a table there. And, 
do a My Devil Man fan comic where it's like, you know, it's like a, it's like this legal limbo, like, okay, you're not supposed to do it, but it's not like in America, if you do a Spider-Man comic and go try to sell it, you'd definitely be shut down pretty quick or hear from Marvel's lawyers and all that. So, like I said, I could do that maybe, try that or put it online for free. And if, as long as you're not selling it, now I'm not a lawyer, so don't go, you know, take this as scripture, but. I think if you do a, like, like the people who do fan films, right? Like, you know, you've seen the fan films, uh, was it Predator versus Batman? Just to name one out of, I don't know, hundreds. Someone used those two characters in the film and it screened, uh, they put it on YouTube and screened online. I think it might even screen at a couple of festivals or shows, but the person's not making like a penny off of it. I think that's what the, uh, the statue is. But like I said, that's not legal advice coming from me. But um, I just mentioned that because, you know, who knows? Maybe uh, maybe one day I would do a <laughs> unlicensed Devil Man story. But the dream would be that it, you know, it was an official thing, an official release. But um, like I said, it's um, it's not something I'm you know I'm dying to do. Like if I don't do it, and I I'll die unhappy. But no, it'd be a very nice, it'd be a very cool thing to do. So. We'll see what happens, right? I can do the conquest of Mexico, but I may not, I may not be able to conquer Devil Man. But I could sure draw him here on my own, which is man, that's um, there's the whole thing, right? As far as you can see from head to toe. But I think um, I think we're almost done with this. Like I said, I don't want to. As I said, I don't want to overwork it. Here I go overworking it. Right? I wouldn't be an artist if I wasn't like a mix of contradictions and and creative angst. <laughs> so, I th yeah, you know what? I'm going to leave it at that. Like, I brought a whole arsenal of, you know, tools. But when you do that, it doesn't mean you have to use them all. Sometimes it's just knowing when enough is enough. And for the purpose of this drawing, you know, I don't need to... Uh, Again, create like this infinite masterpiece where every inch of the paper is covered with markings. This is a, yeah, nice little exercise. It's a nice character to draw. Um, I'm trying to think, I've probably drawn him, as far as like the Japanese characters, I've probably drawn him the most of others. And um, I've drawn El Muerto more, that's for sure. But uh, I definitely have a lot of Devil Man art, I think, around here. So, um, anyways, that's uh, that's my Devil Man drawing. Uh, let me sign it so people know I did it, right? People who didn't see this video, they'll know Javier did it. I mean, um, if anybody wanted to buy this, just message me let me know. I'm not against selling artwork. All right, so there's uh, my devil man. Anyway, like I said, in another episode, I'll do a, I'll do a like a bigger review on the actual uh, Go Nagai comics, the Devil Man work, and uh, another one on Mazinger Z. That's a whole nother. That's a huge thing. I mean, you know, it's so great as a cartoonist that um, he creates these, you know, twin gigantic properties. And he's done a lot of other books. Cutie Honey, he's done for... Cutie Honey's been around, you know, since it came out in different uh, variations over the over the decades. And he's got a lot of... He's got a ton of characters, but, you know, he struck gold with Devil Man and Mazinger Z. And that's great because in Japan, they own the... Uh, the creators own their work, pretty much for the most part, very much unlike American comics, as far as like the big iconic superheroes. But in Japan, you know, Gona Guy owns all his characters, all his creations, so he can license it, merchandise it, you know, make a living off it, and build that artistic empire. So I think that's that is fantastic. That's one of the reasons I love to self-publish. At least I own everything I make, you know. Good or bad, you know, hit or 
you know, not not a hit. It's yours, and that's that's very important to me. So, uh, thank you very much. Um, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Um, I know I say that every time, but if more people subscribe, I think more good things will come out come out for the channel. There's certain things that you get through YouTube once you hit like a hundred subscribers. You know, um, not I don't get not money or anything, but you get a couple of extra things behind this behind the scenes things that help me improve the show and such. So, or sh you know, share the video online. You know, I'm sure you probably got Devil Man fans. Share, hey, say, hey guys, check this out. Um, but thank you very much. Um, once again, I'm Javier Hernandez, and thank you for watching Los Comics TV. We will see you later. Bye.